I keep insisting that we have to pray much in the Holy Spirit. And I want to keep reminding you about that because... There are many benefits, and we don't have time to look at all of them this morning, but I just want to remind you of just one particular benefit. We all know the scripture where it says that it, build your most, it builds your most holy faith. What happens as a result of praying much in the spirit is your spirit man is activated to pick up the signals of God. Many times people are struggling about being able to hear God's voice and to discern the direction that God has for their life. And what happens as a result is of praying much, your spirit man gets activated so you can discern and know and be sure that it's not you, not the devil, but it's God. Remember, not every open door has been opened by God. Even a prison has a door. And you enter into a prison because the door is opened, it will be locked behind you. And you create a problem for yourself. So you got to be careful that not you understand and discern. When we're dealing with people, when we're dealing with situations, we need discernment. And people come in various shapes and forms to you. Some can come with wickedness. Some can come with selfishness. Some can come with foolishness. All of them produce the same result. You are at loss. How do you discern? How do you know what the intention is of the person that you're dealing with? Are they trying to take advantage of you? Are they trying to hoodwink you and try to trap you so that they can benefit out of that transaction or is just just foolishness discernment ananias and sapphira brought and said this is the money we we have for you peter the land we sold and here it is and peter said is that all how did he discern the holy spirit is there not just to say this is good, this is bad, but to guide us. He's our teacher. He's our guide. He's our comforter. He will keep us from being trapped. He'll keep us from making wrong choices. He'll keep us from making bad investments. How many of us have burnt our fingers because we trusted somebody and we invested somewhere? And did not produce the result. We lost it. Why? Because we did not take the time to pray and discern what God is saying. And not every shut door is of the devil. God can shut doors. No matter where you are in the journey of life, make sure Jesus is with you. If you're in the storm and Jesus is with you, he'll tame the storm. But beware if Jonah is with you. You got what I said? So be careful. Listen, you will never pray, over pray in the spirit. You will never over pray. Pray, 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 pray. Because there are so many advantages in praying in the spirit. But when you pray, engage your imagination. Engage your thinking. Your thinking is as powerful as your prayer. I'll talk about this this Friday. 
Your thinking is as powerful as your prayer. Many people are suffering, not because they don't pray, but their thinking is out of line. Because we think somehow we've been raised to think prayer is telling God what he has to do for me or for somebody else or to do or to perform something. We don't understand that it is alignment and working with God so that my eyes are open and I understand what the Lord is saying and I walk with him. That's a walk of partnership. God is not a genie. God is not an errand boy. God expects us to walk with him. But if my spirit is not aligned to him, it is impossible for me to know the heartbeat of God to walk with him. So, if you are a prayerless Christian, you are a powerless Christian. Don't assume that everything will be okay. Just because everything is okay now doesn't mean everything is going to be okay tomorrow. You have to create your tomorrow. This is the Lord, this is the day that the Lord has made, right? But now He gives you the ability to create your future by speaking into that tomorrow or into this today. You have to declare, I will be victorious in the name of Jesus because this is the day that the Lord has made. I will live in divine hell for this is the Lord, the day that the Lord has made and I decree this to manifest in my life. Today, I will make the right choices. Today, I will walk on the paths of righteousness. Today, I will win in every situation. Today, the favor of God will be upon me that will attract promotion, increase, and supernatural blessings upon my life. You have to speak, and this is what pr prayer is. You don't walk in doubt. You don't walk, you don't walk in fear. You walk in authority and dominion. You create it by releasing words that are in line with God's word. My heart will swell with joy. I will rejoice and be glad. I will not let me see if everything will be okay so I can rejoice. No. If everybody likes me, I will rejoice. If everybody speaks good about me, I'll rejoice. If everybody loves me, I will... No, no, no. If my body is in good shape, I will rejoice. No, I will rejoice. I'm establishing it in the name of Jesus. I have been given the authority to speak into my future. To shape my future with the words that are anointed of the Holy Ghost. Remember, words that you speak are not just meant to communicate with one another, but to communicate even in the spiritual realm for creating something in the realm of the spirit that will impact the realm of the natural. Because the creative ability of God has been placed inside you. But as long as you can speak what God is saying and your speaking is in line with God's word, it shall manifest. Somebody say amen. amen. Glory be to God. So I, somebody say, I will rejoice. I rejoice. Say it again. Because the Lord is with me. Amen. Hallelujah. When you feel depressed, discouraged, disappointed, and you feel low, let me tell you, that's a plan of the devil to cut you off from the joy of the Lord. The joy of the Lord is my strength. If the joy is stolen, you're finished. That's why David began to what? Encourage himself. Encourage himself. Anyway, that's my, not my topic today. But I just thought I'd say a few words to encourage you that you and I will be men and women of prayer. This church has to learn to pray. 
not just for your needs to be met, but to establish the kingdom of God on this earth. Remember, there is a force of darkness that is trying to thwart, trying to stop, trying to stall the progress of the kingdom of God. And many Christians may not be living in blatant sin, but they become so cold that they don't think about and are not concerned about the kingdom of God. All they're concerned about is me, my family, my joy, my pleasure, my bank account, my well-being. That's enough for the devil because you become blunt. You're no threat to the enemy. The way God expects us to live is where the world will say, here they come, the people that turn the world right side up. We got to be passionate about turning the world upside down for the glory of God. Thank God for your businesses. Thank God for your jobs. Thank God for your blessed families. Thank God for your, your son's job and your daughter's marriage and all whatever, you know. Thank God for all that. But that is not the focus of your life. And you have not achieved anything of eternal value if your focus is only that. My focus has to be how can I see the church, the kingdom of God grow? What can I do? I need to be praying. I need to be sowing. I need to be engaging my time, my energy, my efforts to see people saved and being built up in the things of God and in the Word of God. Complacency is destroying the body of Christ. Complacency is blunting the edge of our walk with God. Thank God we believe that God wants us to prosper. Thank God for the messages of prosperity and blessing. I believe with all my heart that God wants us to prosper and be in health. I believe God wants us to prosper to the degree that everybody else prospers through us. I'm not against that. But if my entire focus is only to become rich for me to, be, to boast... To amass wealth so that people will say, wow, look at him. He's so rich and so wealthy. I am not a value to the kingdom of God. I need to be doing something. Well, thank God for the prosperity, the wealth and the power and whatever God gives me. These are tools he's giving me saying, I trust you. Use it for my glory. For the kingdom's sake. Come on, church. It's time we realize there is a reason we are still alive. Do you know that there were many thousands this morning that never woke up? Do you know there were thousands upon thousands that were much younger than you that never woke up this morning? Thousands that were more wealthier than you that never woke up this morning. More educated but never woke up this morning. Living in the western world but never woke up this morning. So why are you alive? Why am I alive? Is it because I deserve? No. No. It's because he loves us. He says, I still trust you. I'm looking to see what you can do for me. What a privilege to be alive and be given the opportunity to serve him. Church, please hearken to my heartbeat. Please become a man of prayer, a woman of prayer, and the word. I know these days it's not fashionable to carry a, a Bible, which is a book. Most people carry the Bible in their phones or iPads or whatever. We've got to read the Bible to the point that it falls apart. And the pages become dog ears. 
And you've written so much that sometimes it's difficult to see, what did I really write over there? That should be the meat. That should be the meat. People are losing the passion to read the Bible. People are losing the passion to pray. All we are concerned is selfishness. Somehow, majority of us have fallen into the trap of only preaching the gospel that makes you feel happy. Makes you satisfied. And that's part of the gospel. But that's not the entire gospel. God wants to bless you. The reason is he wants to use you to be a blessing to the nations. Why did he bless Abraham? We talk about Abraham being very rich. Is that right? But do you know something? There came a time in Abraham's life that God required more than anything that he had. Whenever God gives you something, get ready. There is a time of reckoning coming. Abraham, give me your son, which was worth more than anything he ever had. Give unto the Lord. That's why God said, listen, I'm not after your money. But he said this, Proverbs 23, 26, my son, give me your heart. Give me your heart. Question. This is not to find fault with anybody. This is just to make us realize how ardent we are about the things of God. Just look back the last one week. From last Sunday to this Sunday. How much time did you pray? Beyond your needs. How much time did you spend praying in the Holy Ghost? How much time did you devote to listening to the word to build your spirit man that you could be activated in the spirit? How much time have you invested for his glory? <clears throat> Listen. If I said, do you love God? Everyone would say yes. But how do I know I love my God? By the time I spend with Him. You know, every one of us loves to spend time with somebody that we love. Is that true? Yeah. So, because this is a spiritual exercise, it's not like in the natural our body recoils. The flesh is at enmity with the spirit. So I need to harness the body, the flesh, and come before the Lord to develop my intimacy with the Lord by spending that time. I'm challenging you people of God. You don't pray only so that you can be successful. You don't pray only because you want a job. You don't pray only because you want favor. You pray because you love Him. And the byproduct the side effect is you're prospering are you with me praise God heavenly